Hello out there, and welcome to our Claymation class. I'm Jamie Hazelwood. And I'm Tommy Sims. And today we'll be doing a few lessons on the very basics of Claymation. Because there is an awful lot to cover and an awful lot to understand, and it can get pretty heavy. Great, Scott! So, we'll be going down to the very basics of the word itself. Because you'll see these movies such as Nightmare Before Christmas, Coraline, the annual Christmas specials, Gumby, Wallace and Gromit... And they'll all be called different names, such as stop motion, stop frame, claymation, freeze frame. But they all pertain to the same thing because they all share a common meaning, which is the manipulation of physical inanimate objects to bring them to life on film. Now, there's a wide range of physical objects you can use, such as Legos, action figures, or dolls, which would classify more into your stop motion, stop frame, freeze frame, And the use of clay in our films obviously leads us to calling it claymation, which is what we'll be doing today and what we'll be doing for our demos. There's many different types of clay, such as Play-Doh, Silly Putty, Ceramic Clay, but our clay of choice for all our films is Sculpey, and Tommy's going to explain just why we use Sculpey. And here we have Seymour demonstrating a little brick of Sculpey 3 clay. Now, Jamie and I use Sculpey 3 clay because... While animating a stop-motion animation, you need a clay that won't dry out over time, and the animation process can take quite a bit of time. It can go for days and days to get a scene fully animated, depending upon how long you want it to be. And Sculpey 3 is a great clay that won't dry out compared to, say, your ceramic clay or Play-Doh or any other type of clay that you can buy in your local craft stores. Now, another advantage of Sculpey 3 is it comes in these little individually colored packages. As you can see, this one here is purple, and it comes in a whole range of colors. And another advantage of it is you can mix the clay itself to create new colors if you don't have a certain color. So say I want to make a purple right here, and I have this red clay, and I don't have that specific color of purple, I can take a blue clay and mix it together, and it'll come up with that purple. Now, as you can see here, the clay starts off as a very kind of mushy clay, and it's perfect to animate. You can mush it around, create any type of shape, and it will, as you can see, hold its shape. Now, what you can do to help it hold its shape even better, if you don't want to manipulate this any further, is bake it in your oven. Now, on the top of every package, like so... Uh, They have the instructions on how to bake your clay, and that's at 275 degrees Fahrenheit in your oven for, say, oh, 15 minutes or so, depending upon how much clay you have. Now, what we do is we take a character such as Seymour here, we sculpt his head, and then stick it in the oven and bake it for that amount of time, so that way his head is hardened. So while we're animating him, we can take him and manipulate his head and whatnot, and it won't misshapen whatsoever. And as you can see his head didn't get deformed at all, whereas his hand here, we keep his hands raw so we can manipulate his fingers, pose them in all different kinds of shapes, and like so. Great. Well, now that we know kind of the basics of the materials that we'll be working with, now we can go into just how we capture these objects and make them come to life. And how we do that is by taking multiple, multiple pictures of our animation happening and then stringing them together to make one fluid motion, or however many fluid motions you need for your shot. So the next material that you really need is a some sort of camera, like so. And this is the digital camera that I have used in previous stop-motion animations, and it works just fine. Um, all digital cameras will work, and each one has their own different settings, but most of them are basically the same type of settings. So let me just fire this guy up here and kind of run you through some of the settings that I usually set up before I begin animating. Now, what the first thing I do after we have the scene all set up and the lighting ready to go is to go into the menu and look up the different types of lighting and white balance that the camera can let in. Now, I usually do a tungsten for the type of light that I have, and what you can do is just kind of play with it to see what looks right for you. Some of them will look more blue, some of them might look more orange, Depending upon the type of scene you want to set is the type of setting you're looking for. There's Some cameras have a night shot, some of them have a day shot. Um, it's just a matter of going into your digital camera and playing with the types of settings that it has. 
So once I have that all set up, I'll go into the uh, frame size and look for a larger size uh, image so that way when we string all the individual pictures together, we'll have a higher quality picture compared to a lower quality picture. And once that's all good to go, I can get out of the menu and say take our first picture. Now as you can see, while I took the picture, I didn't have the flash on and I rarely ever use the flash. Now, Tommy, why don't you use the flash? Wouldn't that be helpful? It could be helpful, but I really don't use it at all because we take so much time in setting up the lighting. As you can see here, we've got clamp Ooh. lights attached to the ceiling of our basement here, which are lighting up our set. And when I put the review on, you can see that it captured the image with the lighting as is. Now I'll go ahead and turn the flash on. And the flash is good for some special effects and whatnot, but I'll just show you what it does. So I've got the flash on. And as you can see, it completely whited Seymour out. You can't see any facial features on him whatsoever. He's really white. The background is really dark. You can see in the window of our shop here that there's a glare, and we don't want any of this. This kind of destroys everything that we had set up for the shot. So another thing is if you have the flash on, if you keep taking pictures with the flash, that flash is always going to be... There we go. It's always going to be at the very center of the image. So no matter what pictures you take, when you play your film back, that flash is going to be smack dead center and you're just going to see this white blob throughout your film and we don't want that at all. We want to keep it so you can see all the detail that was put into your set and your characters and everything. Now let me shut the flash off here. There we go. Take a few more pictures just to show you the difference. Now you see that, how I picked up everything in the background compared to the previous picture that I took of the background, which was all blurred out like that. Whoa, Tommy, that looks cool. You're going for all the different pictures. Is that how you can see your animation playback? This is one way to see your animation playback once you take all the individual shots. I'll take a couple pictures here to show you right away. And as you can see, it takes quite some time to take your pictures. Right, and normally when we be going through our animations, we'd be having him do something, so that way we could have it captured. But this is kind of more just to show you guys exactly how you can see a nice little preview of your animations. All right. So once you have all your pictures taken, you can hit the playback button, and most cameras you can toggle through your images with a left or right button. Um, this camera here has different settings on where the arrow buttons would be, but I can hit left, and it'll go left actually kind of rewind through the images there okay so here's the first picture that I took and I'll hit the right button to see the following image now my camera here shows a bunch of pictures uh, without going black some digital cameras will show the picture disappearing and coming back where it kind of flashes in between each image and that's perfectly fine this is just a way to preview your animations now what we do is take the pictures off the camera here and put them onto any type of movie software and string them together so you don't have to worry about your images flashing in between each other with a black screen it's just a matter of this is a way to preview your animation now what's on that crazy little thing that it's on there Tommy? alright this camera is on a tripod now compared to normal tripods which just have straight legs this one has legs that you can bend to get different kind of camera angles. You can get a low angle like so. Whoops. Or what another great thing with this type of tripod is I can wrap it around certain objects such as a pole or whatnot. I'll just use my arm as an example. And I can kind of have it up high to get a higher angle just like that. And, and compared to a normal tripod which just has the straight legs and limits you to just the one shot. This one gets you all different kinds of interesting angles and uh, really, really uh, gives you a much more interesting animation. 
Right, and the key is with our tripod as to why we use it with these three little legs here is that way we can have a balance to our camera. Because if we just have it on a normal little box with some tape, you're really not going to know for sure if it's staying steady. And you'll definitely notice that in your animations when it's playing back, it won't be near as smooth. So while something like a tripod is really nice, it's not entirely necessary, it'll just really help out with your shots and create a lot more dynamic shots. So now that we've kind of gone over just a little bit of the basics, we're just going to hammer, uh, hammer home the point that we have here that the nature of this animation is a lot of repetition. There's going to be a lot of different camera shots, but a lot of taking the same pictures over and over and over again. And it's something that will teach us patience above all else because it'll take a lot of time to get these animations, but there's just really nothing more satisfying than once you have it right on screen and seeing that all come together, seeing your you know just normal inanimate object right here and really giving it life and it's you're the reason why you made that come to life is through all your manipulation and whatnot and just to see all that cool hard work really pay off 